Hello, my dearest and sweetest friends, and happy Feral Monday. Sometimes a few of you, y'all are new here to the family, and y'all ask, what is Feral Monday, and why feral? It's when we go um, absolutely feral. Most of it came from because I rescued a feral cat, that cat that you hear snoring. Um, so I just thought it was so funny to say the word feral because that's what Jean Bean was. And that just means that's where we're gonna go wild and we do just a little bit more wild feral looks on Monday because it's Monday and it's Monday. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just gonna let the swatches do the talking for us here. Y'all ready? I'm gonna link it, that's it right there. Let's put this on our eyes immediately. So here's what we're doing. We're gonna start with some clean canvas. This is the shade Fair. I want it to be a little bit more full coverage. I will wipe what's on my lid off in a little while because these are very full coverage. You're not gonna be able to see my skin through these, but I want to kind of hide any freckles or veins from here up. So that's what we're gonna do with the clean canvas. We wanna look very full coverage, very extra glam today. My mom's on the phone with a really old friend of hers. They're having so much fun. My door's shut too. They're just they're just having time of their lives in there. Okay, we're not even gonna worry about the lid space. Also, this color temperature, this lighting, how clear this is. Look at this. This is front camera. Crystal clear. And I don't wanna hear one word going, I don't like that lighting. I don't wanna hear one word. <laughs> Why I use certain colors at a certain point in the eye makeup look. So sometimes you'll see me start with my first transition. This would be my first transition, okay? But when I want more depth in the crease, I'm gonna start with a small brush, the E27, and I'm gonna start with my second darkest color. I might actually grab black eyeshadow. Um, I don't have one from Kiko, but I did wanna use these. So I'm gonna grab this shade and I'm gonna be able to get more definition and more depth because I'm laying this color down on that wet base so it's going to be very pigmented and I'm able to really focus it and get a lot of depth. If I lay down my first transition color and I set through here, this would not be as pigmented at and as intense. So when I'm wanting a very intense socket, intense crease, I'm gonna go in with that darker shade first. And this is actually a really good um, example of why I don't go in and set my entire base with any kind of powder at first. And even if I was to go in with this color first, it's obviously gonna grab this particular shade and really amplify it because it is wet. So as long as you're using pressing motions, press, press. <laughs> but as long as you're using those pressing motions, you are able to get a really smooth, even blend and you don't have to go in and set. I feel a long time ago we were taught to go in and set that base first, but sometimes that was actually sabotaging us. So this is a really good example of why I don't go in and set with any powder first, because I want this super intense. Again, these pressing motions, make sure we're pressing it into that base, and then we're not gonna get any kind of creasing, we're gonna get more precision, and we're just gonna get a smoother overall even blend. And before I forget, I'm not sure if y'all saw Tati's video before last, um, she talked about this and she showed it. And I'm sure most of y'all know that Tati has seen and reviewed everything in the whole entire makeup world. And she really likes the C42. <laughs> so I wanted to share her video so you can see it. And also I'm gonna tag her here and I just wanna say thank you, Tati. I love you so much. So yeah, C42. And also if you ever wonder why these sometimes flip, because I wipe them off and then I do it again. I'm filming a TikTok for this look. So I just wiped it off. We're not in the matrix. Let's wipe our E27 on Sheila. Don't know if you missed it, but now we all have Sheila. Some people do t-shirts, some people do sweatshirts. Here in the Rosenbaum Beauty fam, the family, we do a makeup towel named Sheila. <laughs> now we're gonna switch over to this shade, number 30. Grab that on the side of the same little E27. And if you have smaller eyes or hooded eyes, do your eyeshadow with a brush this small. Bonus points if it's angled. I'll link the E27, but you can always just go check and see what you have in your collection. You might have a little small brush, but it just helps so much 
When I first started, all of the tutorials that I would watch, they were always using a big fluffy brush. And I find that it's almost hindering when you're even starting out. At this point, I know exactly where to pick it up on that fluffy brush. I could do an entire uh, just cut crease with the fluffy brush because of where I'm at in my skill level. But I feel that when we're starting out, we just don't understand even how we're picking it up on the brush. So it really helps to use a very tiny brush when you're starting out, believe it or not. We would think it would take forever, but it really doesn't. And you're able to kind of understand your eye shape more because your brush fits in here. Also, normally I already do Halloween looks. I've already done like two usually by now. Your girl Rose, she's just getting, she's getting up there in age. <laughs> she's taking more naps. Actually, I don't take naps, but I want to take naps. She's slowing down. <laughs> she's definitely eating dinner at 5.30. She is. Okay, absolutely. Now I'm going to take a fluffy brush. Mm-hmm. I am, I'm gonna take one. I need one, I need a, um, I need an eyeshadow closer to my skin tone, but not too dark. What do we have here? Nope, those are too dark. This should do it. We'll just grab this little bake up one. This is what I'm looking for. And then I'm gonna use the side of it just to kind of press it. Okay, we're using that side. Now I'm gonna use the tip of it just to soften. There, see, okay, this is important. I'm holding it very far back. That's gonna give us very light pressure because we're wanting to swirl everything very lightly together, but we don't wanna start moving that base around. Let's clean up our lid space with our micellar water on our C30. I think we'll do just a clear base to really enhance this. That is a jean bean hair on my nose. And it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just kinda making sure that this is all cleaned up. That looks good. Now, these are gonna be pigmented enough to cover up my skin tone. Remember when I said that? Definitely. But a clear base like this is just really going to enhance and grab. Yes. Wait, I hear a snorty cat at my door. I gotta go let in my snorty snortle. We wipe off that same C31. There we go. We'll just make sure that that's smooth across here. And what we're doing is we're not even gonna worry about this. The, um, see how it's not a perfect cut crease? We're not going for that. Hey, this is one of the prettiest blues I have ever seen. Just wait till you see this with that camera. The, I mean, front camera, wild. Okay, watch this. Pick it up on the C30. We like to use this one because it's your fingertip, but better. It, it's wonderful for applying any kind of shimmery shadow. It just grabs it and then it just places it. Look at that. Look at this. I know you're looking, but I just feel the need to just scream, look at this. And it just keeps going and going. That is so pretty. We're gonna add more? Of course we're gonna add more. But it is so pigmented. And I'm gonna bring it really far up here. There we go, bring it all the way over here. And then we're gonna add, I mentioned black, we're gonna add a little bit of black, but we're not there yet. Let's just keep building this up a little bit more. I feel like a butterfly. This is so pretty. Okay. Told y'all we're gonna grab some black eyeshadow. First we gotta itch. We're gonna grab this one from Natasha Denona. And then we're gonna grab it on the E27 right in the center. No, I'm just gonna push this in between that black and the two transitions. Makes a difference, right? It's so subtle that it just Oh, it just looks so blended. Oh, I forgot to tag it, sorry. This is um, my favorite black eyeshadow known to black sh shadow makeup world. It is the best, minus the jean hair. Um, it is just so pigmented, so easy to work with. Listen, black eyeshadow can be difficult to work with. This one is not, but I will say, is all you need. Start with very small amounts, but if you can find this, it's kind of hard to find. It was for a while, I don't know, I haven't checked, um, but this is the black eyeshadow. It's really the little things. Look at that difference. Look at how finished that looks. Just seamless, just smooth, and just adding that tiny amount of black, and you wanna know why? Okay, 
Okay, there's more to it than what, what we're just going, oh, it's so blended. Because the base of most jewel tones is going to be black. So by adding that black in there, it's kind of just creating and finishing that flow to where it just looks melted. These are things no one would tell me, but I tell you. Let's just watch it blend in action. Remember, just one tap of the black eyeshadow. And it's just gonna fill in these gaps. It's gonna melt everything together. You can already see that just smoothing itself. This man and these important phone calls that he broadcasts to all of you every day. Honestly, y'all are, are in on all of this. <laughs> Look at that already. Oh, that's so pretty. Remember, we definitely want a small brush when it comes to black eyeshadow. Black eyeshadow just wakes up and chooses chaos. Wow, you just saw that transform. It's so pretty. Grab, I just wiped this brush off the C30. I'm gonna link it and then I'm just grabbing. I grabbed quite a bit of it. Don't be afraid to get in there, okay? Really load that brush up and then we're just gonna we're gonna have to not do much because the eyeshadow and the brush just do everything. And then we're gonna bring it up in here. Keep it there. This is gorgeous. All right, let's load it up just a little bit more. <laughs> then I wanna take it and just lightly feather it over this way. Almost like a firework explosion. And then if you'll just take that on the tip of this brush, since it's so flat, you'll have precision to do that. I love this eye look so much. And then that transition. What should we do now? We should take that nap. <laughs> All right, I think this liner matches perfectly. I don't know how I'm able to do this so maniacally with contacts now that I wear contacts, but I think I've done it for so long without contacts that I just understand my eye. No tugging on my eye. I love this. I did an ad for this years ago, okay, for these Lancome um, eyeliners. I don't talk about them a lot because I know they're a spicy price and we do have other ones, but this one I really can't dupe. And the reason why is because it has blue sparkles in it. Um, but it's eye safe, obviously, and it is just, this is the one I cannot dupe. I love this one. In fact, I don't even like using it a lot because I just, um, I feel bad because it is a spicier priced one. But, and you can layer it and it doesn't get all funky and it wears beautifully. I can dupe the black, I can dupe all the other ones, but I can't dupe this particular color. I always leave a gap for my liner because it's just going to go over that a lot easier as opposed to it going over any kind of shimmer. Um, a lot of times we don't realize that, but that could be one of the reasons we're struggling with liner. It can sabotage you. So just leave a tiny little gap for your liner. Now, if you want to add just a touch of a wing, we'll just stamp one on. I'm going to load up the brush a little bit here with that same Natasha Denona. And we'll just stamp right there. Just gonna add a touch of the lift and just that little bit of definition there. See that little bit of definition compared to there? Now I just cleaned up with micellar water. Didn't add a wing, that's just that shadow. Once you clean it up, it just gives just a really nice lift to the eye. It's Monday and that means that we're getting the brooms out. These are as big as a broom and I like them. <laughs> Now, the other day we tried this foundation and we absolutely fell in love with it, but I wanna go film a video about it because I feel that other people need to know about it, but we absolutely loved it. I'm gonna get you a link. It's super full coverage. You'll see when I come back, I'll have it on. Whew, it is, it might be my new favorite. It might be my new favorite, but I'll be right back. I'm already back and I'm actually using the house labs today. I've only used it twice and I don't enjoy it as much as the Natasha Denona, but y'all know I do things, I try things at least three times. Um, one thing I am enjoying is this brush, which is not released yet, but will be very soon. So let's work this in. Again, this is not a bad concealer. I just know already that I prefer the Natasha Denona one, but I just wanted to try it out. I'll probably try it out a few more times 
just to kind of see what's going on with it. This brush, <laughs> coming very soon now. Now I'm gonna set with my one size pink powder. Um, I love this one. If you're wanting to do something a little bit more full coverage or say that you wanna use your everyday foundation, just your classic go-to favorite, light, light, light coverage, even a BB cream. Um, just by adding something like this, this powder is gonna give you just a little bit more coverage and spice that up a little bit more. So I'm wanting extra, extra coverage. So we're full coverage everywhere today. Ooh, it's so pretty. Um, but a powder like this, and even if you don't want the pink, the other one still adds coverage. So if you want to just add a little coverage to what you already have, this would be such a great powder. I'm going to link it. I, I've been using it nonstop. I love it. Let's get a little while. Let's do a little extra brightening with this. Just like in the video, we're going to just focus most of it right here. And if you're like, what the heck are you talking about? I posted a reel about this, the stage white. And then if we want to get a little wild, we can add a little lift right here. Fun. Oh, I forgot to tag because it's just so much fun. Look at that difference. It's so subtle, but that it's not. It's so pretty. Can tap in the edge just a little bit more there. Oh my gosh, I love it. Love this bronzer. I'm gonna see if I can go find a tag for it. This one's also Kika Milano. So smooth. And it's it's wildly pigmented, just wildly pigmented. And then we'll let that kind of migrate up here onto the cheekbone. Now let's finish up the eye. We're gonna take that clear base again and just do a little bit underneath here. I don't even need to dip back in. We only need the tiniest amount, but we are gonna go in with our C31. Messing everything up. See how it's slanted? We're gonna take the slanted part to smooth that out. Both sides. And then we need our E27, because it's gonna fit perfectly under here. And then I'm gonna do the blue. Of course I am, it's me and it's Monday. And then make sure we're not putting a cat hair on our eye. So I did just pick him up a second ago. Plane's flying over, yep, got the cat hair. Let's take that and then it's just gonna press right into there. Pretty. And then back with our Kiko Milano shadow, this shade is number 27. Um, I forgot to tag this one earlier, I'm so sorry. I just get in this zone and I just get so excited. And we'll just press that right underneath the blue. And the reason it looks like there's something different here is because that's the highest point. And that highest point is always gonna shine brighter. So this is the same over this way. It's just kind of hidden because that's my eye shape. This blush I've been reaching for the most. It's not quite that bright blue pink, but then it's not a coral obviously, and it's not a berry. It's all of that. <laughs> I just love it. There's four shades of it, by the way. I just think it looks so perfect with my skin tone. And I love the formula. Um, you see that it's, it's, it's a matte, but it's not just a dull matte. It's beautiful. I really think that y'all are gonna like this one. Color temperature, there it goes, it's trying to fix. So smooth. This is gorgeous. I'm gonna do it with a nude lip liner for right now but I'm gonna take that off after this and I'm gonna film, cause I wanna see this on top of black. Minus the lash glue I have stuck to it already. Bless. <laughs> this is from Fenty Beauty, it's new. Um, this shade is hologram, that's so cute. So let's put on our gloss balm. Ooh, that's pretty. You'd have to see it with back camera, but it does have a little bit of a shift to it. You can kind of see it there, but in person, it's pretty awesome. And then I'll grab my lip liner. I'm gonna do a NYX Line It Loud. This is the shade Fierce Flirt. And then I'll just get a really nice lip line. Okay, 
All right, that's our finished look. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love the lip. I'll show it to you with my camera in just a second. It's so pretty. I'm going to go try it on black lipstick after this. I love you all so much. I'm so excited for the week ahead. Um, I want to teach y'all, usually every Halloween, I try to teach a couple basic things. One of them was how to not stain. Um, oh, staining. I wish I had known that many moons ago. I could teach y'all how to block out your brows. I'm like a really good example of that because I have very coarse brows and darker brows, so we'll do that. Um, I'll just try to think of a couple things because some of us enjoy to dress up this spooky season. And also there's still things that you can learn from Halloween makeup, even if you don't celebrate it, don't enjoy it, but there's still things that we can learn from the process. In case nobody's told you today, I love you with all of my heart and don't know what I'm posting tonight. Maybe I do. No, I don't. I think I might start posting the red lipsticks from the, the Maybelline Vinyl Ink. All right, I love you so much and I'll see you tonight.